Okay, grab a snack and something to drink because this video is gonna be a long one. I made a incredible DIY. It's a miniature greenhouse made with my Cricut Maker and some of Cricut's unique materials that they have in stock. And I wanna thank Cricut so much for sponsoring this video. Hi, I'm Lacey and welcome to our space. Let's look at what we're gonna be using. Starting off with chipboard this is heavy duty chipboard you get five pieces in this pack and we are going to be using all of them they also have acetate acetate is a cellulose like material that is biodegradable and it looks and feels like plastic we are also going to be using some wood veneer in maple you get two of these in each pack and we're going to need two packs of these so let's get started First of all, I opened up Design Space and we're gonna go to the canvas and over on the left-hand side, we're gonna click images and type in window. There's over 300,000 images in Cricut and there's 219 window images currently. I already picked the one that I wanna use. It is this arch window pane and we are going to resize this to the size that I'm going to use for this project. This is going to be the front and the back of the project. Up at the top toolbar, you can put in the dimensions you want for this. And then you can click over at the right, you see it was green and highlighted, and the double box at the top with the little plus sign, and you can duplicate it. So that's what we're gonna do. Make sure there's a box around your image and then hit the duplicate. And we need two of these, one for the front and one for the back. Then I'm gonna duplicate it once again because I want to use the bottom portion without the arch on the top as my sides to this piece and the tops to these piece. So I duplicated it again, this time by kick clicking on the image with a right click and then hitting duplicate in the drop down box. So in order to take the arch part off the top of this, we are gonna click into shapes and grab this square. And then I'm just gonna resize it by stretching it out with the arrows and placing it down on tops to cover up the part we wanna remove. After that, I'm gonna go to the top where it says arrange and send it to the back so I can see it's covering the entire arch. So then I'm gonna put a box around the whole thing that anchors these two together temporarily. And it shows over at the top on the right where it's green. And then at the bottom of that, I'm gonna hit slice. And that's going to give you the layers that you can remove. I pulled this one over to the side. I'm gonna right click it and then hit delete. And you could also reshape it, see like this, but I just want them gone. So I'm gonna do a delete on that one and I'm gonna delete the other one. And now we have the bottom half of this window pane and that's exactly what we need. And I need four altogether. So I am going to hit duplicate and put four of them down here on my canvas. So I'm trying to save you guys as much time. They're gonna pop up two at a time. They don't do it like that normally. I just didn't wanna have to duplicate them all at the same time again. So next, we are going to need a couple of pieces to anchor this together when we start to put it together. And I went back into shapes and I discovered there was an equal sign. So first of all, I'm gonna change the color of it to black so everything can print out on the same mat. And then I'm gonna go up to the top and rotate it because I want to be able to show you guys without covering up any of my other pieces that I'm gonna resize it to the size I need it to be. I'm gonna put all the sizes on the screen in front of the project so you know, but this is gonna be in Cricut Access already sized to fit if you wanna make it. So now I have this resized at the top or I'm finishing resizing it and I'm just gonna set it aside. These are gonna be some anchor pieces to put it together. Now I'm gonna go back into shapes and I'm gonna be doing this quite a bit and I'm gonna make a base for this, like the floor of the greenhouse. I'm gonna do this one 8.5 five inches by 7.5 inches. So it's slightly bigger than our project. So we have something to put it down on. And I'm going to change it black because all of the black items are being cut out of chipboard. Then I decided, you know I'm extra, I wanna put a countertop and two benches inside of my greenhouse. So the first piece here that I'm going to cut out, it's going to be the anchor part for the countertop. 
and you'll see what I mean about the anchor part for these. I turn it to black and I sized it the sizes that were on the screen. Now I'm gonna go back in and get another square and I'm doing the one that has 90 degree angles that's not rounded because everything needs to be kind of 90 degree angles for this. I'm gonna resize this to that same size and turn it black. You do that just by clicking the color palette up at the top and then picking black. And once I do that, then I can just duplicate that one because I need two benches. There's no need to remake it. It's going to be the same size. Now, I realize that my countertop is going to sit and you're going to be able to see under the front edge. So I decided to make another piece. I grabbed another square and I'm going to make that a long as the countertop piece, but much thinner. So it's just like a little front lip to it. We're going to resize that at the top. And then to do that, you need to unlock that little lock so you can put in the dimensions you want. I already sized all of this project out for you guys. So that's why I'm going really fast with it. And I'm putting the dimensions on the screen so you can do it or you can customize to your own. And I'm going to change it black. Then I'm going to organize it here the way that I like it because I like to keep all of my pieces together. All right. So this is all of the pieces we're gonna need to cut out in the chipboard, all of them. And now here, I'm gonna show you all of the pieces that we're gonna cut out, period. The golden pieces here are the maple wood veneer and then the gray is the acetate. So now I'm going to show you how easy it is to get these other pieces if you want to design something like this. I grabbed and duplicated another arch window and I'm going to change the color of it to the golden color. And those are ready to be cut out. That's how easy it is. We have to cut out the same pieces and so I'm just gonna duplicate another one of the window panes without the arch that I already made and then go up to the color palette at the top and change it to gold. Then I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to duplicate it so I get the two side pieces and duplicate it again so I get the two top pieces. Look how fast this is going. The initial stuff when you make it takes a little time but then you can duplicate things. I'm doing it on the countertop because this is an anchor piece in black but I'm going to duplicate it and turn it to the wood and this is the top of the countertop. My project is going to have several layers to it. You can make this and skip some of these layers if you don't want to have realistic looking windows in there or a wood finish to part of it. You can so I duplicated all of the chipboard pieces except for the base. Now we do need to make two more things. First, I'm getting another square and I am going to size it to this size. And we're gonna make two of those. Like I said, this is already in, gonna be in Cricut Access, and so you will be able to see it there with the sizes, but I did put it on the screen. And then I'm going to duplicate one of the window panes without the arch on the top, and I am going to make like a door frame part. I'm gonna take a square and I'm gonna cover the middle section of this, and I wanna get rid of the sides. We're gonna put it on the top and then go up at the top again and hit arrange and set it to the back and make sure that it's fitting where I want it to fit. Then I'm going to go over to the bottom on the right after I put a box around it and hit slice. That is going to slice off the pieces I don't want. And that are, these are the ones that I'm going to right click and hit delete. I do want this piece right here I want the middle section and I don't want this one so I delete it that's gonna give us our little like faux door that I want to put on it then I'm going to start over and I'm gonna grab a arch piece and I am going to turn it to the gray the gray silver and I'm going to hit contour on the far right at the bottom and at the top you see the piece I want but all these little window pane pieces, I am going to hide. I'm gonna click on them and hide them. And you can see they disappear. And over here, you can see behind it, this is the piece you get. That's gonna be the acetate. We are going to go ahead and duplicate that because you're gonna need two, one for the front and one for the back. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing 
with the window pane without the arch. We're going to grab it. We're going to duplicate one and put it down underneath. Then we are going to hit contour. I could have turned it gray first. I just didn't. I'm sorry about that. And we're going to hide all the little window panes. It's all yellow over here. And that's what we want the full one. And then I'll just turn it to the gray. We need four of those all together. So I'm going to duplicate those until I have four. There you go. Then I need one more piece and then we have all of our pieces, I swear. I'm kicking another square and I'm going to make this one to be the roof peak top part because our roof is going to be removable. So now here we have all of the pieces that are going to cut out and they are color coordinated to match the stuff that we're cutting out. The chipboard is black. The um, wood veneer is in the gold and the gray is the acetate and I renamed them all over to the right so you know what is what so now we just like click make it and it asks us are we cutting this out on a mat or without a mat because I'm using my Cricut Maker 3 and everything's going to be cut on a mat and then they show you over to the side how many times you have to cut things out and they ask you what materials you're gonna use. So all of those black mats is heavy chipboard. We're gonna click that and then follow the instructions that your machine gives you. And at the top it says, move the little rubber uh, white things that go around that bar to the side all the way to the right. And you can see I did that, there's four of them. It said, put your material down on your mat, a strong grip mat and tape it down for the chipboard. And I had my fine point blade in, remove that and put in your knife blade. And that's what I'm doing here. And then we're ready to start cutting once we have this in slot B here and we make sure it's nice and secure. So I made sure I taped everything down really, really well for this because it might move. Then you hit your load button on your machine and your machine measures to see if you have enough material. Of course we do. And then we're going to hit the play button and it's going to start cutting. So I'm going to let my machine cut all of this out. I will tell you the chipboard takes a very long time to cut out. It has like 24 passes. Ah, do laundry, watch TV or something. Keep an eye on your machine and just let it do what it's going to do. I'm telling you, this project is so much fun. And if you like miniatures, you're going to love it. And here is my first piece cut out. All of the little window panes come out. It's really easy. It cut out perfectly for this. Now, my strong grip mat was already damaged. So make sure you use a really good one. <laughs> I had a couple of issues and had to get another mat. And keep all of these little pieces. Keep them because we're going to be using some of those. So now I'm showing you, this is my deep point um, blade. I have that to cut out the wood veneer. I had to tape it down on my strong good mat too, and I left my little wheels over to the side. I'm not even gonna show you cutting it out. No one wants to watch that right now. And then for the acetate is here on my standard mat, and I'm using my fine point blade. And I put the little wheels back. So now here is everything. This is all of my stuff. The chipboard I took outside and I spray painted it. Everything's piled on top of each other. I used Rust-Oleum's two times the paint and primer in Blossom White in case you want to know. And I have all of my maple cut out. I even put over here my maple pieces that came out of all the windows. You can see these little pieces. We're going to be utilizing a lot of these and a lot of those chipboard pieces that I showed you. I also have over here on the other side, well, I'm still showing you these. I don't use these, but I'm saving these for my stash and anything that's left over because I'm going to figure out something for them. You know I will. So now this is the base. I did not paint that white because there's no need to. You'll see. I'm going to cover up most of that. And this is my acetate and it still has on the protective covering. Now to put this together, we're going to be using um, Beacom's uh, three in one craft glue. I tried a couple other glues on sample pieces and this was the best one. And I think I got this at Joann's. It's about $8 for this bottle. I am going to lay my hand down and slowly, this is in real time, drag the glue along the edge. Be very careful 
not to ever get any glue on your acetate. And now I'm speeding this up because glue strings are attracted to the acetate. Lint, dog hair. I have a chihuahua. <laughs> I had his hair in there. I clean my desk. I put down this paper and acetate will still attract glue strings and all of that. So I am just slowly dragging my hand. This is sped up a little bit now. And I pick up my piece and if I see glue strings, I rip them out because you do not want to get it on the acetate. You cannot get it off. It will cloud up if you use some kind of remover on it. So now I'm putting the acetate down on this one. I already did it and you can see it's really shiny. I take one side of the protective covering off and I put it down and then I peel in the corner so you don't damage it where you'd see it the other side of the protective covering off and then you have two of them so now as that one dries I am going to then put down glue again and this is sped up and I also discovered and I showed you there that I can wipe off the tip each time and it stops me from getting excess glue anywhere it's just acetate's very very clingy just be real careful because you'll be really sad if you mess it up so I'm going to just clean it off in between each one and then I'm going to put down my wood veneer on it I also found like if you start and you drag it you can drag it all the way off your piece and then the glue strings will go that direction instead of the other direction and then I turn it around a lot so I'm not reaching over it and accidentally putting my hand in the glue. I know this is a lot and I know this is a long video. I'm sorry, but I want to give you guys all the tips to make this successful for you. So now I'm going to bend this in the middle slightly and put the middle down on the X and then fold it out. This worked perfectly. And this whole one is done. And I did all the rest of them. I'm not going to show you those. I just press it down and you can put a book or something on top of it for it to dry but it dried fine. So here are all my pieces already put together. And I have those two long pieces out of the chipboard. I did paint them white on one side. They were just so small that they moved around so it's white kind of on both sides. And I'm gonna glue them together. They are the same exact length and they're labeled for the support piece. Then I'm gonna put a couple of clips on it from Dollar Tree and set it aside to dry. Make sure you don't get any glue anywhere near your window panes because of the acetate like I said so once these are clipped on set it aside to dry and we can move on to the next step there's a lot of little steps for this these are my um benches and it is also my countertop now the big one's my countertop I do cut a bigger piece of wood grain for this I put mine together and realized that I wanted it a bigger piece. So I sized it a bigger piece in the instructions and I told you on the screen the actual size of it. Mine is a little small. The wood veneer, I put a bigger piece on, okay? So I'm going to then cover up all of these and on the top and have those ready to go. So now that our piece is dried to anchor it together, I'm gonna flip it over, flip over one of our arch pieces. All the white sides are gonna be on the interior and I put a drop of glue. You can see I was trying to turn this and it fell. I put a drop of glue at the top and I'm going to hold this. It doesn't take that long, like 20, 25 seconds and it will attach to glue to this. And then I always turn it because I wanna make sure it's straight. I'm, my OCD kind of gets me if it's not straight. And I'm going to set that to dry for a second. This is like probably five minutes later. Then I'm going to make sure the white is going in and I'm going to glue on my side down to this, not next to it, down to this. So I put the glue on the top and I'm going to glue one side on. And I'm gonna hold that probably 25, 30 seconds and Again, I want to make sure it's kind of straight. So I try to turn it. It looks like it's crooked. And so I try to turn it to make sure it's straight and watch your glue strings. Then I have these little Dollar Tree candle holders. They're glass. They're heavy. I just put it there so that piece would not fall in while it was drying. I did let it dry for a few minutes, but I'm trying to get this video together for you. 
And so I am gluing on the other side the same way. And after you set that aside to dry for a while, then we're going to put a drop of glue on the top a tip and I'm gonna to try to put that on first. Just get it in the right place. And then I'm just gonna slide out the side and put glue on it. And try not to get it on your acetate. <laughs> I can't stress this enough. And then I'm gonna turn it around. It's really lightweight. It turns around real easy and do the other side. And again, after it's done, I'm gonna set it aside and let it dry. Now we're gonna move on to the base and I am gonna take the smallest of the little squares that we have, the square, more squared pieces. Actually, I think they're rectangles. They're the smallest ones. I can't stress that enough too. Um, and I'm going to make a checkerboard pattern on here. I'm just showing you what it's going to look like. But I know that my piece is not as big as this board. So these bottom pieces are going to be a little bit too big. So I'm going to take one and I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to use my Cricut uh, cutter, my paper cutter from Cricut, vinyl cutter. And I'm going to push it up at the top and stick it in the middle of the two ones. And it fits there perfectly. And I'm just going to cut it in half. It, this blade will cut through this wood veneer, just one piece of it. And I'm going to start them at the top. So this is going to be the back. And I'm going to leave a gap around the whole thing and redo the checkerboard pattern just with smaller pieces in the back. Because you're not going to see them once we put it together. I'm just using those for spacers in the back and I have so much of that left over so I'm just going to glue them down. So we're just going to put the pattern on again and make sure you leave a space around the entire thing because we need that to glue our greenhouse to the base. I'm okay next here I have some little boxes that I made out of the window panes for the chipboard. I'm using the tallest little rectangles for this to make the boxes. I made three. We're only going to use two of those. And then the next widest tall ones, I'm going to make little benches. I'm going to glue three sections together because we need four of them like this. Glue these pieces to the back and I have three here and here's the fourth. You're going to need two for each one of the benches and only two of those boxes. I only needed two. Then next, I have what was this window pane, and I'm just going to whitewash a little um, white paint mixed with water. I'm actually putting some of my chalk paint down on it, and it's kind of thick because it's old. It's almost gone. And then I'm going to brush some water across it to take most of the paint off of it. And this is going to be the faux door that we're doing. It's going to curl up on me. I'm going to set it over on the side, but it's fine if it curls up on you. Don't worry about it. Set that to dry over on the side and we're going to start assembling our benches. So these two pieces are going to be glued to the bottom of this bench piece. All right. I am going to slide the chipboard in and glue it down. And then I'm going to glue the next one to it as well. Not difficult. All right. So I'm not going to show you how to glue all of that. You can make benches any kind of way you want for this, but these are the pieces that are cut out. And I'm just utilizing a bunch of the leftover chipboard to do this so I don't have to cut out any extra pieces. All right. Then next, I am gluing the coordinating wood veneer pieces to the sides of the little boxes. I only do two of these. They fit perfectly on the front section and the back of this. And then on the sides, I'm going to pull them all the way to one side, to the front of it only. So you're going to have a little gap on the side. It doesn't really make a difference. You're hardly going to see it. If it bothers you, you can cut a bigger piece for that. Then after I'm done with that, I have these little squares. They come from the top section and they are an exact square. I'm gluing five of them together because we need a little base. So stack five and put glue in between all of them and then find the coordinating square in the wood veneer and glue it to the top. Then once you do that, this is my OCD. You don't have to do this. I don't like the dark edge, so I'm measuring more of those same squares and you can actually just cut them with some really good scissors and I'm going to cut out a whole bunch of pieces and cover around the sides. 
and I know this is going really fast because this video is so long but I I wanted you guys to see what I did to decorate it now here I told you my mat got damaged before it was damaged before I did this it was user error my error not cricket at all and so it messed up one of my pieces and I had to go buy another set so I'm just using these extra little pieces I'm cutting them off of the mat to be able to do some of the trim work on this this is all personal preference so here now I have the two top pieces this is going to be the roof I take that piece of acetate that little thin piece that I cut off and I am gluing it to the white section make sure you're flipped over to the white and I am gluing it down and making sure it doesn't go past the white section you're gonna have excess of it on one side so you can glue the other side on and then I'm taking one of those little trim pieces off the excess that I had and I'm gluing it down but don't worry I made these cuts for you you have the pieces in the um, actual project that I have in Cricut Access I put those in you don't have to cut them out yourself like I did with some scissors I realized I wanted that extra piece I set that aside to dry it, it dried for like five ten minutes and now I'm gluing the other piece down on it you're gonna want this to dry really well sorry there's my head I hope you guys understand I took that little thin piece and I am gluing it to each edge and make sure this is the other thing you need to do make sure you put the two longest sides to this together the boxes are short on one end and long on the other. So put the two longest sides up in the top. And then you are going to glue it together on the white side. So then you still have the wood veneer on the outside. Now I forgot to glue down this little piece of chipboard that I didn't paint because it is the front of my countertop. So I am putting the wood veneer on the front of that now the fun starts you can decorate yours any kind of way you want but this is what i'm going to be doing to mine all the pieces are glued together that we need and i'm just going to be doing some decorations and some little extra lacy things to it so this is a, some sheet moss and i glued it down the center i put too much of it over on this one edge that i'm um, working with here to the left so don't put that much over there because you need your benches to sit flat i end up taking some off I found some little tiny wood beads from Dollar Tree. And if you can see the front of this, I glued on the door. I used a glue stick on the back of it and I put the white side facing out. It's just a faux door. It makes it look like you can go in there. And I'm looking for a very tiny wood bead in that pack. Then I took some of this beaded garland and took off one of the white sets of beads. And I'm gonna cut that off with a little pair of scissors. And I'm gonna stick the pointy end because they're like teardrops into the little bead to make a doorknob yeah this is really fast because not only is it unnecessary <laughs> but it's a lot and this video is already long so that's what i'm doing to decorate the front door for this i'm just making a little door handle and look at how cute that is I'm extra you guys know I'm extra so I had to do that now I just found a little piece of the chipboard and I'm gonna cut off some little handles to put on the front of my benches as you can see on the sides of my benches and I know I didn't show you this I took the coordinating pieces of wood veneer and just glued it down and since they look like they are little cabinets already I put little handles on it I glued the, those down I also trimmed out around the edges of them with some of that excess wood veneer and I cut off some little pieces of, of uh, chip wood and put them into little shelves or bottom sections and finished off the ends I know it's a lot and I know I didn't show it to you it's not that hard you can look at it and see I just glued on extra pieces and now I'm doing my countertop and like I said my countertop top portion is bigger so now we're gonna glue down our greenhouse to the base I did it exactly like I did with the acetate I ran it slowly I sped this up because this is so long and I put the glue 
towards the edge of all of our little checkerboard because on the front you're gonna have a little lip and I wanted a little lip there that's why I did it that way so we're gonna set that aside and let that dry now and our window is dried I let that dry for more than a half an hour and I'm gonna take a ruler and put it next to the opening in the middle because you should have a gap and use my Cricut scoring tool and press down really hard and score this and you can see the one side that I wasn't holding down starts to bend up that's what you want because then over to your right it is folded because I scored it I didn't have to fold it it just folded on its own because I scored it now I'm taking a tea light and I'm taking the top part off and I'm gonna use the top part and the on off switch and I'm gonna make a sink you can see it in the back on my countertop I took a piece of black metal and I bent it over so it looks like a faucet and I'm gonna use the little handle as the on off switch and that's what that kind of looks like I'm just giving you ideas here and then I have a, this set of tea lights that have a little leaves on it and I am going to trim out the top edge of this I'm gonna go around the side and then I'm going to go around and up and over the arch part and then back around and I'm gonna glue it all I'm gonna Put some glue on this heavy duty plastic piece that you know starts off your lights and stick it in the corner and that will start me off and then I'm just gonna put little dabs of glue on some of the leaves and stick them to the side I'm gonna make sure that my uh, battery pack sits in the middle in the back and it will fit back there even with the little stands that we made and so I'm not gonna show you how I glue the whole thing it's easy just glue it around the edge then I decided I needed more lights than that and so I'm taking this pack which is a submergible you can submerge this in water little light from Dollar Tree and you twist it on and I'm gonna glue it underneath the sink I'm gonna make sure that the actual light part that's glued to the chipboard looks like it's the plumbing that's under there and then put all the lights to the front of that and now we're gonna start sticking this all together so I cut off another piece of moss to cover up the light pack. You're not going to see it anyway, but I'm OCD. I just didn't want to see it at all. I put down my little square blocks and then the risers for my sink and I pushed that in. Then I put in my benches and they go in so that the handles face out. And I put, I put a little shelf in one. I know I didn't show you guys how to do that, but I just stuck some chipboard in there. I cut it down the size and made it into a shelf. And now I made all of these little plants some of them I made previously to this for other projects and some of them I made just now I made a little hose with this wire from Dollar Tree I know it's really fast but I'm gonna show you what the stuff looks like inside it's really easy a lot of the decoration stuff is just greenery that I had in my stash from Dollar Tree or wire that I had in my stash from Dollar Tree. The little holes is in is the tip from some hot glue. I made a little apron out of the material I had left from my last project that I did on here. It's simple. It's it, There's no stitching or anything on it. I just cut out an apron shape and put a neck piece and a tie through the middle of it. I actually had some little tiny Ziploc bags from a Timu haul I did and I filled them with some topsoil and some mulch and I made a little wreath out of some Walmart wreath stuff and some Dollar Tree pit berries. <laughs> I know look at it's so cute I'm in love with this I put moss on that front edge so it looked like you were walking up to a greenhouse out in your yard and I put moss all the way around it and the little topiaries are from another project but this is so stinking cute to me. I love it. Tell me, do you guys love this? I love it. I think it turned out fabulous. I want to thank Cricut again so much for sponsoring this video. And thank all of you guys who actually stuck with me in this long video and watched it. It is sitting at my entryway and I love it. Everyone I have shown it to loves it. So many of my friends are making one and I put it all in Cricut Access for you guys. So it's so easy for you to do. It looks so great lit up 
in the daylight and you can see all the wood grain and stuff and it looks even better lit up at night to me the roof is removable so you can play inside of it now this isn't a kid's toy but i have granddaughters one just turned nine the other one's about to turn ten this would work for like their little chelsea dolls and stuff like that that they could actually play with this and it's pretty sturdy but i wouldn't give it to little kids to play with if they were any smaller than that i have pots in there that came from dollar tree and a couple of them that are just like little lids to spray bottles and things i love the little bag of soil that i put in there and the bag of mulch i just think there's so many other things you can do with this i was going to make little tools but oh I'm kind of out of time for this video and I was going to make a watering can. You can make a bucket. Oh, you can keep adding on to this. I can tell you right now, I'm going to make another one. So that's it for this video. Comment down below. Would you make this? Do you like this? You could do it a whole lot easier than what I did, but I'm so extra. This is how it turned out. I want to thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in my next video. Bye loves.